All right. Oh, good. Mariona made it in. Hey, Mariona, I'm glad you get to, to sort of relax for this talk. As you will see, we're about to turn on the live captioning. There we go. All right, we will just give it a couple more minutes for folks to make their way in. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Alexandra. And if anybody wants to share in the chat where they're joining us from, please feel free. Good morning, folks. I feel like at this point, I should have some sort of set of ready-made banter for waiting for the uh, event to start. But it's, it's early here, I'm just still drinking my coffee. Hello from Catalonia. Hello from Valencia. All right. Yeah, it turns out we've got two folks joining us from Spain this morning. How's everyone doing today on the second to last day of the Festival of Indigenous Languages? All right, we'll give it one more minute and then we can go ahead and get started. Uh, I see folks are tuning in on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Good morning, Kai. Okay, folks, uh, just the usual housekeeping notes. Uh, today we will be live streaming on YouTube and this will be recorded. So just as a reminder, uh, if you ask a question, your name may appear in the recording, just be mindful of that. Uh, and as usual, we are streaming to YouTube. So if you missed part of this talk, you can catch up on it later. Uh, and without further ado, it is my pleasure to hand it over to Yannick Bob to introduce our speaker today. Good morning or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Yannick, and today we are going to talk about the Boro. If you wondered how to spell that weird letter, it's U. It's mid-high back vowel. But <laughs> without uh, no long talk, um, I'm going to hand over to Sullev, who is uh, a linguist and uh, a teacher. So Sullev, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Janek. Okay, I will be speak today about Boro language. And uh, I am glad to see that there are so many listen listeners from it seems from all over the world and uh, i am Vero speaker myself and janek is also a Vero speaker and we have here also oliver we we three are from estonia we, i sulla Ol oliver and janek and we with Janek are Vero speakers and uh, Oliver speaks also already some Vero quite good. Uh, Janek and um, Oliver are my, my students actually. And I am the teacher at the University of Tartu. But uh, I will share the screen with you now and, we, and then we proceed. <laughs> So, Tere, Tere is high in Vero. 
And uh, Janek also explained to you uh, how to spell, how to pronounce this uh, word uh, vowel with a wave on, on, on O, and it is Ö, Vero, but now you see here some a letter Q, and uh, it, it you should pronounce like glottal stop, tere, tere. It, it is very common, so it is a very common sound in Vero, tere, and it means hi. And now, who, who am I? Who am I? Vero nimi om Jyväsullav, my this Vero name is Jyväsullav. Ja mu Eesti nimi, ametlik nimi om Sulaviva. My official Estonian name is Sulaviva. It is written in my passport, but Vero people call me Jyväsullav. And uh, I am a linguist, Vero and South Estonian lecturer, teacher and researcher. And I am working at the University of Tartu and also in, in the Vero Institute. And uh, I am an activist of Vero language. And uh, I do my work very much to Vero revitalization and also to somehow normalize the situation of the language. <clears throat> and um, I am also father of three world speaking children, or actually they are bilingual, Vero Estonian bilingual uh, children. Their names are Jakko, Helle, and Tule. And now about, that was about me, but uh, now about my language. Mia om võro kiil ja kon tuud kõneldas. Or in English, what is võro, võro language and where is it spoken? Well, võro is spoken in South Estonia, in so Southern Estonia, as you see, it is, uh, Northern, northeastern Europe, or I would say no, northern Europe, because northeastern it is already near Uralic mountains, but but uh, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, it it it, it is more central uh, northwest, north uh, Europe, northern Europe, and um, here in Estonia, in southern Estonia. Uh, lo locate the so South Estonian language area where Vero is, is spoken. And uh, okay, in, in, in Southern Estonia, but uh, what kind of language is Vero? Uh, first of all, it is uh, Uralic language and uh, more precisely Finno-Ugric and Finnic language, Finnic group of of finno uric languages contains uh, Finnish and Estonian and, uh, and also uh, a small subgroup of South Estonian languages. It's in Vero it sounds Luna Esti Kele, Luna Esti Kele. It means South Estonian languages. And, uh, and these South Estonian languages are Vero Seto, Mulgi and Tartu, and uh, you, you can see them also on the map. And uh, Vero is the biggest and um, maybe most, uh, most work has to, done to, to, uh, with, with Vero, with, with written Vero, with Vero literary language and, and uh, so on. And uh, the next is Seto. And then Mulgi and Tartu. Mulgi and Tartu are smaller South Estonian languages and they are more mixed with standard Estonian and, um, and they are, today they are weaker, weaker part of uh, South Estonian language area. But Vero and Seto is the uh, strongest part. 
here. Now, I will s show to you one language tree, or actually you can see here two language trees. One is uh, North Germanic, Germanic, and another is Finno-Ugric. And uh, this, uh, uh, the, the biggest uh, Finni Finnic language is, of course, Finnish. And uh, the second one is Estonian. This yellow one is Estonian. And uh, Estonian has about 1 million speakers and Finnish about uh, 5 million speakers. And actually, we, we can say that this uh, uh, South Estonian language group shares uh, third place with Karelian. The first is, uh, in terms of uh, speakers, is Finnish with 5 million. Estonian is second with one million, and, and then comes Karelian and South Estonian. But uh, nowadays, I would say South Estonian even has a bit more speakers than this Karelian. And other languages are, other Finnic languages are really very small, like Lydian, Vepsian, uh, Ingrian, Livonian, and they are very small languages. Yes, but 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 inside this uh, South Estonian uh, group, there are Voro, Seto, Mulki, and Tartu. And uh, these are the most important uh, symbols of uh, of uh, South Estonian languages: Voro, Seto, Mulki, flags. And as you see, Tartu even doesn't have flag. Still, still doesn't have a flag, and uh, it actually very clearly shows that Tartu is uh, shows us that uh, Tartu is the weakest part of uh, South Estonian languages. Uh, something is has been done uh, to Voro, to Seto, to Mulgi. They have some institutions, uh, some. Uh, learning materials and so on, uh, but Tartu still does does not have so. so tar but but <laughs> this Tartu language has been very great language in history. It it was South Estonian um, uh, written la literary language um, about hundred years ago. But nowadays, Vero is the most uh, um, strong, the strongest and. Uh, most prominent part of uh, South Estonian languages. Now, how, how many, how many uh, people speak or uh, at least understand Svero? Uh, this census, Estonian census uh, from 2011, uh, these results were that uh, there are about uh, 100 and 2000s, yes, 102,000 uh, speakers of the South Estonian languages. And, uh, and the biggest, uh, the mo most, most speakers, the most uh, biggest part of them were Vero speakers, with uh, 70, about 75,000 speaker, speakers. Then the next Setos, Seto speakers, about 1200. Uh, uh, thousands, and then Mulgi uh, with uh, nearly ten thousand people uh, uh, speakers, or at, at least uh, who, who said that they have some command of uh, Mulgi, and then uh, Tartu is the smallest, uh, about four thousand people who who marked. Uh, at the census that they they are connected with Tartu language. The, pro the problem is that uh, in in the census uh, there was a question: uh, uh, what what, uh, what regional uh, uh, languages or dialects uh, do you know? Uh, or in Estonian, it was millised uh, oskat. It, it the oskat that oskat uh, doesn't mean that you speak necessarily. 
maybe Oliver, would you say in, in English, how, how would you say this? Et milliseid keeli sa oskad? Milliseid regional keeli või murded sa oskad? Well, it's like, uh, which languages do you know, I would say? Not necessarily. Well, maybe no, but maybe a bit more than no. Maybe also, uh, you know, which languages you're able to speak to some extent. Not necessarily fluently, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, but it means uh, that uh, this uh, quite uh, quite uh, beautiful number, it is uh, about one tenth of Estonians, this one, one hundred uh, thousand speakers they are aren't necessarily speakers but uh, we, we we can say uh, both passive and active speakers together where we can say that are, are this number these people this number contains both both passive and uh, active um, speakers of this language and now how different is is uh, Vero and other are Vero and the other South Estonian languages from Estonian language, um, because we are speaking here that uh, these are South Estonian languages. But uh, okay, South Estonian, but but this ordinary Estonian, North Estonian, or standard Estonian, how far is it from our languages, our South Estonian languages? And uh, uh, well, of course. Uh, they are understandable to our languages are understandable to to Estonians, but still, if we take a text written in Vero, then then only about uh, twenty percent coincides uh, uh, absolutely with with Estonia, and about uh, eighty percent uh, have some 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 things uh, a bit uh, some differ differences <clears throat> like some uh, different endings or different stems uh, or uh, different um, orthography even but but this orthography also also shows uh, different pronunciation and uh, as i already said uh, Voro, uh, this uh, South Estonian la language group uh, uh, had already uh, more than many, many hundreds uh, of years ago, it, it already had uh, its own uh, literary language. It, it was uh, called uh, South Estonian or Tartu, Tartu literary language. So some some languages uh, are very very young in terms of uh, literary language, but actually Vero and other Vero no yes Vero and Tartu we we could say all all, all South Estonian languages they they had their own uh, old literary language already about five hundred years ago. This uh, oh oh old uh, Tartu language. But yes, uh, it actually it, it worked. It, it was used, this old Tartu language, only in southern Tartu uh, Ma, southern Tartu langu language area and uh, Vero, Vero Ma, Vero language area. So Mulgi and Seto area uh, didn't, uh, there it, it wasn't used. So it, in the central part of the South Estonian languages uh, was used our old own our own old uh, literary language it was called tartu and uh, actually it was a language of church school and law and uh, it was uh, used in everyday life and and uh, many books were published in this tartu language and and, and this uh, Bibles, New Testament uh, was was used in churches in Luther, Lutheran Protestant ch ch churches in South Estonia, in Vero and Tartu area, and also ABC books and so so on were published. But 
then at the end of 19th century or second, uh, second half of 19th century, uh, this uh, old uh, Tartu literary language, uh, step by step, it, it uh, started to decline. And, uh, and uh, the, there was a battle between Estonian and South Estonian, but, but uh, then, then uh, finally North Estonian won the battle and, uh, and this Tallinn or, or ordinary, nowadays ordinary Estonian uh, won the, the battle. And, uh, and um, this Tartu language or our own literary language lost its importance and, and uh, actually it disappeared by the uh, early 20th century. And uh, after that, uh, actually after that uh, Estonian Republic was, uh, was founded and, and the state language uh, was then, there, there was uh, chosen to the uh, state language, this Northern Estonian language. And nowadays uh, this Northern Estonian or Tallinn, Tallinn is the capital of Estonia. Tallinn language is the state language of Estonia. And uh, after that, these uh, Vero and Tarto and Zeto, they left, uh, ha had left uh, only like a di dialects. Ofi officially, they were um, taken as, as Estonian dialects. Despite uh, they had their own, we, we had their own literary language for many centuries. And uh, then we, we can say that uh, this our own literary language and also spoken language, which Boro Seto and the Starto literary language, they were marginalized uh, in, in, uh, in Estonia. And uh, in the Soviet time, because we, we had in Estonia uh, a long uh, Soviet occupation time, and that was the worst time to our languages. And, uh, and uh, then these, uh, our languages are were called merely a dialect and even were forbidden in school, schools and, and they, of course, they weren't used in schools and, and the kindergartens and, and they even uh, were forbidden in some, some schools. It depended on, on teachers. Some teachers uh, were, let's say, normal people and didn't, uh, didn't uh, for, forbid <coughs> children to speak in the language, but, but some forbid it. And um, yes, and uh, then uh, in the 1970s, 1980s started this language shift from bilingualism. We, we had bilingualism, uh, Vero Estonian, Seto Estonian, but then uh, started this language shift to to uh, Estonian only monolingualism. We had two languages, bilingualism, but then, then we, our, our children started to, to be monolingual Estonian speakers. Yes. But uh, after that, uh, actually after this uh, Soviet uh, occupation, Estonian, uh, uh, Estonian was uh, Estonian uh, started to be uh, again uh, an independent republic, and uh, and it uh, was a new awakening uh, both uh, for Estonians and uh, both also also to uh, Setos and Veros and other South Estonian small ethnicities and their language and and so so uh, it was 
a linguistic and cultural awakening for Vuros, Setos and Mulgis. Mulks or Mulgis, how, how to say in English. And, and to, but but, but uh, unfortunately not to Tartu people, Tartu speaking, speaking people. <clears throat> So the old, uh, great, uh, in terms of Estonia, of course, not in uh, great uh, literary language, Tartu, it, it left uh, as a dialect and uh, even didn't undergo this, uh, this uh, awakening. But, but Voro, uh, Seto and Mulgi, they, they had, undergo this uh, uh, awakening linguistic and cultural <laughs> and uh, at least for all language has now its own uh, standard or literary or standard language too and the uh, rules of uh, literary language and uh, and um, a dictionary of literary Voro and so on grammar and so on, but uh, uh, Seto and Mulgi actually don't have uh, a literary language, but they also have some kind of written language, some uh, kind of written form of Seto and Mulgi, what they use. Uh, they haven't uh, done this mm -hmm. compromises uh, of standard language that Usually languages uh, must uh, do some compromises of uh, some dialects are left uh, left uh, aside and some uh, are at an uh, important uh, central place in, in, in literary language. And it was done for Voro. Some compromises were found between dialects of Voro and this uh, standard or cent centralized standard of Voro was made. But but uh, but not for Seto and Mulgi, and they they are they have just some written forms without these uh, mm, compromises of literary language. Ula. Yeah, uh, there was a question that uh, they want to hear Boro spoken. So perhaps uh, <laughs> this is the place where you could say some sentences in your dialect and in like the written Boro. And Oliver will translate. Aha, yes. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> actually, <clears throat> it is good, good uh, idea. And uh, and uh, here on slides you can see this with uh, light green. It is Voro, like Lona Esti Kiili Kõrvale Toukamine Kata Kümnendel Aastaga Saal. Yes, in in. Uh, 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 blue you can read in English, but in light green in Voro. And I, I can I can uh, read to you some some Voro heranemine. Heranemine tuhande ütse saa ütse kümnendil aastil. That's how Voro sounds. And but but uh, what Janek said that uh, differences between different Voro dialects they are they are not so big. Uh, well, I will say in some instance, some words uh, like inessive uh, uh, ending is n, but uh, no, ha, for me it is h, yes, <laughs> like, like um, in the city, yes, it is what would be in my dialect, it is lina, lina at home, koto. But Janek, Janek, in Janek's uh, di dialects, in Western dialects of Voro, it would, would be Linan Koton, Linan Koton, Linan, Linan Kotun, Linan Kotun. But in my dialect, Lina Koto. No, like that. But, but uh, these uh, differences are not very big. But I, I uh, try to remember, I, I will uh, read uh, some of uh, you know, these Voro. Voro um, uh, passages to you also, then you, you will hear the uh, sound of, of the Vero. Yes, and now you, uh, one time more you, you can uh, see the numbers. Now, now they are placed on the map, uh, how many uh, these 
speakers or let's say active and passive speakers uh, together have this, these languages. Wilki Tarto, Varo and Zeppo. Now, some problems. Actually, uh, nowadays, uh, all these uh, South Estonian languages are severely oppressed and threatened by standard Estonian. Parents do not speak anymore with children. Of course, it is. Uh, it has caused by this long lasting language policy that uh, we have only dialects uh, and not uh, real languages and it was forbidden and, and, and so on. And uh, no, we still don't have uh, kindergartens or schools with Vero, Seto, Mulgi or Tarto as language of instruction. We have some lessons in some schools, but uh, no, no schools with with our languages as language of instruction. And, uh, and in this uh, situation, of course, less and less children and young people uh, can speak Vero or Seto or other South Estonian languages as, as their first or mother tongue. We have uh, many people, actually also many young people who, who can uh, speak some Vero a bit, but, but, but it, is, it isn't any more the mother tongue. And very, we have actually a very small number of children and uh, youngsters with, with, who are uh, mother tongue, first language speakers of Vero or something. And e, Vero is even uh, uh, written into the uh, into the red book of, uh, of uh, words, languages, of this endangered languages uh, catalog of UNESCO as, as a definitely endangered language. So we, we, we aren't uh, yet critically endangered or even maybe not severely endangered, but definitely endangered, yes, definitely. And as you see, Vero and Seto are, uh, are put together here as Vero Seto. And with this yellow, it's definitely endangered. But here you can see Livonian is already um, critically endangered. Now, do we have our Boros and Setos, do we have a, a, an official status for our languages? No, not yet. We, we, we have done great work to, 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 to have this uh, uh, official status. We, we have had discussions in Estonian government and so on in parliament, uh, but we still don't have it. And uh, but Vero, uh, Seto, Mulgi, as I said, uh, we have written languages, literature, media, institutions, and uh, also some modest, I would say, some modest state support also, some programs, state programs for support of our languages, but uh, uh, it, it is not uh, a big support. It is, uh, uh, we, we still don't have uh, Vero or Seto uh, educational system that, that functions in our language, for, for example. Of course, we need it, but we don't have, and we don't have many other things, but uh, some, some state support we have. And uh, of course, uh, at least Vero has also international recognition through this ISO uh, language code. Uh, we, we, Vero, at least Vero, actually Vero is the only of these languages, four languages that has, has this code Vero. Vero. Other, other South Estonian languages don't have it. And actually, if we look at this, uh, 
uh, how to say, language codes, uh, um, landscape of Estonia, Estonia, when, when it actually officially in, in this uh, standard, ICO standard, uh, Estonian isn't a indi an individual language, but uh, a macro level language. Like Estonian is a, a small group of languages and it contains uh, this Estonian or a standard Estonian, uh, e kaka, yes, then Vero. And, and uh, Vero includes also Seto. So this code, Vero includes also Seto. And Mulgi and Tartu, they are somehow between Estonian and Vero. They actually, they should have their own codes, but they, they don't have, and, uh, and they are not, not very happily between Estonian and Vero. And uh, there is all, also a small uh, insular language in, in the island of Kihno, like, like dialect of Estonian, but uh, we almost could say that it is an independent language. Uh, about 300 uh, speakers is Kihno, Kihno. And Kihno, um, I would say Kihno is the only uh, Estonian la uh, dialect who who could uh, uh, survive as a as a regional language of Estonia? Uh, other Estonian dialects are very weak or, or, or almost disappeared, but Kino is still quite strong. And, and then South Estonian languages, Vuro, Seto, Mulgi, and Tartu, they are treated. Uh, as separate languages by by Vero Institute and by by our activists, but but Estonian uh, state treats us still like as a dialects. Then, of course, we have some organizations uh, who support or making this work of revitalization. The most uh, important is Furrow Institute. It is a state institute. We are very happy that Estonia, in Estonia we have a state institute who is dealing with Furrow uh, revitalization and uh, literary and uh, literature and, uh, and uh, school materials and so on. Mm, then uh, and, Non-state institutes, uh, local small cultural institutes, uh, Seto and uh, for Seto and Mulgi, they exist too. Then uh, our university, our Estonian oldest university and uh, most important Tartu University, it has uh, a center for our languages, South Estonian center. And then we have some societies and. And uh, Oliver actually is, uh, has done very great work uh, on this Council of Estonia's Indigenous Languages. We have such a council, all, all our Estonian small indigenous languages are re represented there. And uh, yes, but, but uh, only Tartu language nowadays doesn't have its own organization or society. But Tartu has a uh, university in the Tartu city, and it deals uh, uh, a bit also with uh, South Estonian languages. Uh, and uh, they are uh, they are ditched in, in, in South Estonian, in, in Tartu University, in some extent. Here you can see this building of Vero Institute in the small town Vero. And uh, this map just shows to you uh, different regions of South Estonian linguistic area. This green is Mulgi. Uh, yellow, blue is Tartu, and then uh, red is Seto, 
and then green is where all yes some maps now you 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 can ask uh, or can, maybe you want to know how much vero you can find in the schools um, and i i must answer that uh, actually vero is uh, in very marginal situation in vero schools uh, most schools actually do, don't uh, don't uh, have vero classes at all but uh, about about half of schools uh, still have uh, some weekly classes or something once a week and uh, also seto and mulgi schools offer some once a week classes of their languages but uh, a bit better is situation with uh, this uh, kindergarten or, or preschool education we we have had mm, quite i would say quite su successful uh, language nest like activities we, we 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 had have had also real a real language nest in some years some years it it uh, functioned quite well but uh, nowadays uh, we have many actually many about uh, what was the number about uh, i don't have this number about about uh, 30 uh, kindergartens of uh, rural area have have uh, one uh, group of uh, of Voro language nest, but it is isn't a real language nest, but it uh, works only once once in on one day a week, and uh, so it 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 we it could uh, be called a language nest day language nest day in that in that uh, kindergarten, but yes, still there are some. Quite quite many uh, kindergartens can offer this uh, at least one day in Vero. It 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 isn't enough, but uh, it is some, some at least something. Then, uh, if we have Vero classes at school, then we ha must have some uh, school books, school materials, and we have like ABC book, uh, reader book, read the reader, yeah, so then this song book and the local history book this koto uh, lugu and this local history book vorokilse kooli raamatu then for for example vorokilse piltsenastu pero picture dictionaries or how do you say it in english we have them now already for Three as three different picture dictionaries, and of course, um, small small children's uh, dictionary with pictures isn't enough. We have also uh, real dictionary. The first wa was Burro Estonian from 2002, and actually it was uh, the first place where uh, Burro standard language were. Um, established in, in terms of uh, vocabulary and grammar and so on. Uh, it, it was all also before that, but, but this uh, <coughs> Vero Estonian dictionary um, made it more precise. And then another from 2014, uh, Estonian Vero, Eesti Vero Sonaramat, and it is much bigger already. Well, it, it, it this Voro SD had uh, about uh, 15,000 um, articles, and then Estonian Voro already about 20,000 articles, but uh, inside articles about 50, 50, 50, yeah, 50, 100, about 50, 100 uh, words, different words. 
And this uh, dictionary isn't only a dictionary, it is also online. It has on, or, or also an uh, online vers version that is actually like a world language portal. portal. Uh, it has dictionaries and corpora, world linguistic corpora, language corpora, grammar, part of grammar, and uh, voice recordings. You can click on this uh, word or this icon, icon yes, and and uh, uh, it uh, it pronounces to you the the, the word in Voro. And uh, many words have even many pronunciation in different parts of uh, Voro, different dialects. And then uh, we had, have ha, have uh, done also this uh, integra integration of uh, synth synthetic voice into the um, dictionary that so that uh, these uh, sentences here are read by by synthetic voice, very synthetic voice, and uh, there are even two voices, uh, a female and male voice. And then we have all, also place names and actually some more good things inside this, uh, I would say, language portal, not just, just a dictionary. And one great thing is also that uh, even you from all over the world, you, you can put your vo voice into this, <laughs> you can record uh, words with your accent. Uh, we, we have this tool in, in this uh, uh, dictionary rec recording, words recording tool, online tool. You, you, you can uh, sign up here, uh, write, write down your name and from where you are, and then, then you can support for a dictionary with your voice, with your pronunciation of for a, for a words. <clears throat> then it will be, uh, for example, this line, it is wave in, in English. Uh, line, it is my pronunciation. Then uh, Janek uh, does his pronunciation. Probably it's very similar to mine. But uh, then maybe so, so somebody from F Finland uh, pronounces it uh, with Finnish accent, accent and, it, and it, it is okay for Voro, Voro uh, dictionary because it will be uh, marked when there. You, you, are, you are clicking on this word and you, you, what, what you see is uh, uh, a mail from Voro a mail from Finland, a mail from, let's say, Hawaii, and, and, uh, and uh, with its own accent. And it is, and it is great for us, but uh, we, we don't, uh, <laughs> we don't uh, have yet uh, much uh, people here with uh, foreign accents, but maybe in some day we will have. Then also Setos uh, have their own ABC books and uh, ABC books and uh, and readers and so on. And then we have I I I, I see we, I have uh, I I have uh, only ten minutes left. Yes. Yes, but feel free to take any additional time you'd like if you want to stick around. Okay, I, I will try to do quicker, but uh, yes, then we, we must have uh, left some, some time for discussions too. But yes, uh, we, we have uh, this Umaleht uh, 100% uh, 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 newspaper, but it comes out only twice a month. That's problem only twice a month. All the same with Seto, hundred uh, percent in Seto newspaper, but only twice a month. And Mulgi, 
also a good newspaper, 100% in Mulgi, but only quarterly, only four time uh, year. Mulks have uh, their own dictionary, and the setos have also their own dictionary. They are uh, more like dialectal di dictionaries, not uh, uh, literary language dictionary like like Puro, but still they have their own. Then <laughs> once a year we have our own uh, children magazine, Teheke, Teheke Vero Kelen, as you can read here. And uh, not every year, also Mul Mulki and um, Seto people um, publish their own uh, children's magazine. Then many small languages have their own radio radio programs or something, but we, we also have but very, very small minutes only only about five or seven minutes per week. As you see, every, every uh, South Estonian language only, actually it, it's not even seven minutes, only five, six minutes. Of course we want more, but, but now we have such a small uh, program, news. Then we have every year some, uh, we, we publish, publish uh, are published some uh, children's books. Many of them are translations from Estonian, from Finnish, mostly from Estonian, from Finnish. Then every year uh, are published some new mm, fiction books, uh, mostly original poetry, less prose, but sometimes also prose novels and 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 uh, some translations <laughs> then uh, a great thing is our wikipedia with it uh, <clears throat> janek has done uh, in recent years very very big uh, work there he has written many many articles and now we have <laughs> about more more than than uh, six thousand articles and this uh, Vero Wikipedia we, we use it also at the university in courses to in in uh, translating uh, exercises and uh, it is very important also uh, as a base of um, uh, corpora for language technology for for language te technology because uh, Vero Wikipedia's texts are in high quality, with high quality. Linguistic quality is very good. Uh, and it is good for uh, using in, in, uh, in language technology. And we have also many articles in mathematics and physics and uh, some <coughs> sciences, because uh, some some our mm, co-workers co uh, have been uh, highly educated like this one is written by by a professor of mathematics in university of tarto then uh, in recent years we have some very great things like uh, um, helioite it is a uh, uh, audio audio um, Library, audio books, liber library, online library, and uh, you can really can really hear very many uh, Vero books there with your own ear. And uh, both uh, children and uh, adults books books. And uh, one. Uh, newest, one of the newest things uh, or uh, uh, achievements there is uh, that uh, it, it uh, slowly beca becomes uh, in an online radio, like it, it already has uh, many, many articles, hearable articles, 
about uh, culture, about politics and so on. Then uh, a great things, thing is also uh, cartoons for children. These one are free online. You can find them from, from the site of the Vero Institute. About uh, ne nearly 200 uh, cartoons. Jano Jus is the main actor, actor there. And some are also in Seto. Then uh, recent years, uh, we have also now these, mm -hmm. like Peppa Pig and uh, Thomas and Friends and, uh, and so on. Yes, free, free cartoons that uh, you can find in uh, this uh, uh, Keats Zone, Keats Zone TV uh, channel in, in Estonian Keats Zone channel, yes, channel. And uh, now I mentioned already this language technology and actually we have done quite much in, in this field already. We have this uh, Vero voice to text speech synthesizer available in on uh, Vero Institute site. And, uh, I tried to demonstrate to you how, how it works or how it sounds. It is uh, written here, Tere, tämpä mi kõnele tan võro keele asjast. Tere, tämpä mi kõnele tan võro keele asjast. Oliver, how do you pronounce, uh, translate it? Uh, hello, today we are going to talk about uh, Vero language issues. Okay, and let's try if it uh, works or not, this sound. Tere, tämpä mi kõnele tan võro keele asjast. Did you hear something? Yes, a male and a female sound and a voice. And uh, now we have even a newer one. It is already a neuro on the neuro method. Vero neuro, vero neuro speech. And it is already with a better quality. It's quite natural already. Yes, and then uh, the, the biggest thing uh, as far, the biggest uh, achievement uh, is Vero Estonian Vero machine translation tool. And uh, well, it, it makes mistakes like, like, like Google Translate that it, it, it isn't yet uh, as good as Google Translate, but, but uh, I would say uh, uh, ordinary uh, uh, text, not very complicated, uh, could be uh, translated quite, quite well. Um, if you want to try to learn Vero, then you have actually quite good opportunity to use this Vero Ohpa. Vero Ohpa. It is made with in cooperation with uh, Sami institutions, and uh, it actually allows you to use many languages. We have there um, seven language pairs and. Uh, 14 languages. Uh, one part of them is Vero and another are English, uh, Finnish, Swedish, Norwegian and so on. So you, you, you can try it. Just uh, put on the Google uh, Vero Ohpa and you can try it. To learn Vero vocabulary. <coughs> Uh, yes, and even uh, no, North Sami, Pohya Sami, even North Sami is included because uh, it was cooperation with uh, Vero and Sami language um, 
technologists. What, uh, what we have else, what achievements uh, we have made, well, Veros have made many theater plays in, in our own language and also Setos have many plays and even a, a film. And uh, Veros don't have a, a long uh, film yet, but, but we have a TV serial, <laughs> soap opera in, in, in Vero. It, its name is Takamatsa. And it is, all, it is also freely available on the website of Estonian national television, but I'm not sure if you can see it abroad, but, but inside Estonia it is free. Then we have some uh, popular and folk music, uh, different styles, even punk music and folk music and, and so on. And, uh, and uh, maybe many of you know that uh, in Europe we have such a song contest, Eurovision, and uh, it, 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 it means very much for Europe Europeans. <laughs> at least for, for uh, smaller smaller nations and and once at the 2004 we have had this Estonian uh, representative song in Vero T. Mostly Estonian Estonia sends to this uh, contest uh, songs in English or in Estonian but uh, once it was in Vero. And at the same uh, year, uh, also Catalan, a Catal Catalan song was first time in Eurovision. Uh, in, in the, on the field of music, also uh, Vero, Veros have a very big um, singing festival. And it is, I, I would say, one of the uh, biggest achievements of our people. And uh, we try, we at least we, we try, we, we are not very successful yet, but we try to explain to, to parents that uh, bilingualism and, uh, and, uh, and speaking Vero to ch children is very important and it is a very useful thing and a good thing. And we, we do this work. And we have some, some small books explaining some materials, bilingual uh, Estonian Vero materials for parents explaining that uh, bilingualism at using, uh, and using uh, their own old language, smaller language is very important. Vero on the linguistic uh, landscape. We, it exists, but uh, not very much, but we have some like some signs and stickers and um, and so on. And uh, some of the signs can be also all, even very big. I think the biggest is that uh, this is um, car repair in the town of Vero, and it is really big, massive. Ulli jõttu ei aeta, a massinit kõrda säetas. Oliver, how, how would you translate it? Uh, well, this ulli is a very specific word in Vero, so maybe uh, it's like there is no, no, mm, no trivial talk uh, or no stupid talk uh, here. But uh, but cars are being repaired here, <laughs> something like yeah. this. Thanks. Uh, yes, some 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 shops uh, have placed these signs that you 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 are free to to use Vero here. <clears throat> and this is uh, this uh, petrol station, Olerex, and uh, there are also actually huge, huge signs that uh, you are free to use Vero here. But uh, unfortunately, only, only some, uh, some uh, very rare 
places use this science. Most of the, of the area doesn't have them. But uh, these buses of Vero uh, County, they are also they have also Vero written on, on them. Like Veroma Aigum, Veroma Uten Goon. Veroma Uten Goon, it means Veroma together. Veroma Aigum, Veroma, we have time. And this, <laughs> these buses are actually very slow. <laughs> you, you must have a time when you <laughs> happen to, to drive behind these buses. Uh, then uh, maybe last three years we have had this Facebook group Voro Kiel, Voro language. And it is really very popular. Oh, I have old data here, uh, uh, 10,000. Actually, it has already 12, more than 12,000 members. Now it's really pop uh, popular group in Estonia. Not only Voro speakers, but also Estonian speakers like it, many of them. And uh, in the group, you can post any topics, but only in Voro or, or uh, at least about Vero, but mainly in Vero. And uh, the most popular are these inter internet memes. Uh, people are translating these memes from Estonian, from English, from Russian, and place them, post them in the uh, group, and they are really popular. And they are, yes, shared uh, all over the Estonia. In this meme, meme uh, for, ex for example, Kevajat tule ei kunagi, spring never comes. <laughs> it is posted in, in, in spring, but it was very snowy. Then, let's find it our technical cutters pilti. Let's cosmos the technical pilti. Went to the moon, uh, took four picks, went to the bathroom, took 48 picks. Such uh, humoristic memes are very, very popular. Uh, yes, as I said. And uh, it somehow it, uh, it, it helps also uh, increasing the popularity of the language. Oh. Yes, I have shown you very, very many achievements, but uh, I would say shortly that we have, of course, we have also problems, but I will not uh, speak uh, now uh, very thoroughly about these problems, but, uh, but they are, were touched also already inside this talk. And uh, what I want to say to finalize this talk. Uh, mm, now, now I will uh, talk uh, in in Voro, and uh, maybe maybe Oliver, you will you you would uh, interpret interpret it. Um, Nakas päälle põlitsite kiili kümne aastak. The uh, decade of uh, international languages uh, has begun. Proovimi võtta tuust nii palju kui võimalik ummi kiili jaos. Let's try to uh, take as much advantage of it as possible for our languages. Ja... Mu meelest õge tähtsam on siiski nii mulle kui ku teile kõigile kedi oma keelega tegelet tuu et kõnelami esi oma keele uh, and in my view the most important thing for 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 me and and our languages is that we speak in our own languages ja et Ma olen nähnyt väga palju silmä kirjalikust. I have seen much uh, hypocrisy. Et uh, 
keele edendaja esi, keele juhi, niiku rahva juhi, äikese keele edendaja tegelikult umi lätsiga ei kõnele oma kiilt. That uh, language promoters and language champions, uh, civic leaders, they actually don't speak their language uh, with their own children. Ja kui inemise niimoodi tegeva, siis nä ei ole usotava. And if people are like this, then they're not credible. Tujaus, et uh, oma kiilte alale hoita ja et tõse inemise nakkasi ka uh, oma kiilte jälki kõnelema, tões pead see esitud ette näütama. Muidu inemise ei tule sulle perra. So to preserve the language and to also have other people uh, follow the example and, and speak, uh, one must show a good example, otherwise others will not follow. Just nimelt, et proogimi esi oma kiilt. Let's use our languages ourselves. Proogimi tuud umi laitsiga, proogimi tuud sootsiaalmeedia, proogimi tuud poodih, proogimi tuud egal pool. Let's use it with our kids, let's speak the language, uh, well, let's use it in social media, let's speak it uh, in, uh, in shops, everywhere. Ja. Yeah. Ja tuu pärast mulle esiärenes miildus tuu oli eele, kui ma sattu ütte shoti keeli aktivisti materjale peale. Tuu nimi oli Finlaid MacLeod. So uh, yesterday I, I came upon uh, um, some text uh, by uh, a Scottish Gaelic activist, uh, Finlay, Finlay McLeod, uh, McLeod, I don't know. Yes, I, I am not sure about the pronunciation, but fin Finland McLeod, something. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, uh, Shorty Gaelic, uh, Shorty Gaelic, uh, ja, ja edendaja. Ja tal ime kursuisil oli väga lihtsa reegli. Uh, and his uh, uh, course, uh, I guess a language course, yeah, has a very uh, simple rule. Et tervel kursusel sa pead kõnelema õnne see keeli kiilt ja mitte ütlegi sõnna inglise kiilt. So throughout the, the language course, uh, one can only speak uh, Scottish Gaelic, not a word of, of English or, or any other language. Ja tegelikult... Minu mõelest vabustavalt õige asi, mida ma esi ole ka kõik aeg pidanud, tähtsas, kui sa periselt tahad, et, et, su, kiilt, et su kiil lät edesi, et, et opitas ära, siis sa pead nagu püsüma väga kimme oma keele man, mitte nagu hüplema vähemus ja inebus keele vahel, et niimoodi sa ei jõua mitte kohe. So if you're if the idea is really to to learn the language, then then one should not uh, juggle between uh, you know multiple languages, but really a focus on on the one that you're learning. Yeah, et uh, esikki tõne tõne eestla üts eestlasest keele edendaja, kink nimi on Indrek Park, ja kia tegeles väikesi põhja Ameerika um, siis uh, põlis kiiliga. Tema kõnelest täpselt sama juttu. And uh, an Estonian uh, uh, linguist, uh, language activist Indrak Park, who is working with uh, North American uh, indigenous languages, uh, he has said the same thing. Et uh, üle Ameerika on väga palju otusid, koh opatas oma väikest kiilt, aga nai tüüta, tuu pärast, et tu toimus ingluse keele. Tüüta see õnne nõu väikene käpadais kodu, keelepessi või, 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 või oppamise kursusi, koh kõneldas õnne, õnne ja õnne oma kiilt. So, uh, he has said that, uh, that in, in North America there are you know, many, many language programs. Uh, many of them do not work. And these are the ones where English is used as a, somehow like a, like a language of instruction. Uh, but the, the few ones that do work uh, they they are based only on the indigenous language. 
Ja ma näen sama Eesti ja egal pool, et see on mii viimane ole kõrres, et mii, pe- et, et mii saasi oma latse järgi kõnelema, et, et mii pead esit püsima oma keere peal ja näitama ih, kui jo tuu ka tõisile, ega muud parempat, mida ette ei saa. So, uh, I, I also see this in Estonia, that, uh, that we must ourselves show a good example and, and use the language, and, and this is kind of our uh, last straw that exists. Nii et häste palju tugevust ja väke ja kus ma ütlen, ma ütlesin, et kui sa juba oled ütle väikese keele edendaja, siis püsü kimmähe oma keele peal, püsü kimmähe niiku kivi mägi ja siis on loota, et saami oma keelega edesi ja ei ka mingi keel kohegi ja eles, eles edesi. So I wish you uh, to stay strong and, and have uh, lots of inner force. Um, uh, if you stick and, and stay on, stay and, and use your language, then you will be strong like a, like a stone mountain and, and, um, and, the, and the languages will survive. Nii et aitu oma Oliver ja aitu oma kõigile tõisile. Aitäh kullemast ja kõike hüva. Uh, thank you to everybody and, uh, and all the best to you. Thank you, Zulle. But there has been two questions for you. One of them have been answered already, but uh, let's read it out. So, because I know, Zulle, you have some experience on that. So the first question would be that um, our international students uh, required to have knowledge uh, of Estonian languages in order to study at the University of Tartu? And if uh, yes, then which of these languages is required? Uh, you mean if they want to study Vero? Yes, yes, yes. Because in, in Tartu University, actually, actually many courses uh, are working uh, using English even, uh, but, but they are mostly uh, like uh, IT and so on uh, and uh, medicine and, and so on. But, but if you want to learn Vero, study Vero in Tartu University, actually you, you must uh, have some, so, s- some uh, basic uh, Estonian behind because uh, on the, using only English or some other language, it wouldn't work. Uh, because uh, Vero course at uh, Tartu University is actually an immersion course. <laughs> I will, I will speak only Vero, and uh, yes, of, of course you 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 may have done your homework, and you may <laughs> you may have uh, learned some Vero at home, and then you will may come to a Vero class, but, uh, but then it will be an immersion course and, uh, and you, you must already understand Vero, then you are welcome. All right, and then we have a question from YouTube, because we have listeners from YouTube as well. So, Sulla, what are some of the, some of the biggest challenges you have faced in language revitalization and can you speak of the attitudes of parents and teachers towards the language? Mm-hmm. The biggest challenges, of course, uh, the, big, the, the biggest, biggest, the, the most biggest challenge is uh, that uh, the language uh, change uh, from from Vero to Estonian only has already. Uh, in force in, 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 in Estonia and um, we have so so few uh, children with, with, with uh, knowledge of Vero with, with uh, capacity of uh, Vero as a, as a mother tongue and uh, and it, it is so hard 
to put these parents to speak uh, well with with uh, with uh, to, to their children, and uh, it is a most the biggest challenge of Vero Institute where I am working. And uh, another is uh, Estonian language politics policy policies. Because, as I said, uh, Vero and other South Estonian languages have some uh, modest support of, uh, of uh, Estonian state, but uh, we still haven't uh, support for, uh, for uh, at least bilingual educational system where, where equally Vero and Estonian would, uh, would uh, used. And uh, it is uh, really a, a big challenge because still, still we, we, we are speaking and speaking and, and, and still Estonian uh, government and, uh, and officials, uh, they still don't uh, take us uh, seriously enough. It's like the very big challenge is that uh, in Estonia, people are supportive. They like Vero and Zeto, and Vero and Zeto are so nice. They are old, our own old languages, very a warm languages, homey, home, our home languages, our own languages. But but uh, if if we, if it uh, comes into the level of uh, serious language policy, then in in our society, politicians and 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 uh, directors of headmasters of schools and uh, and so on, they they cannot think that way, that uh, Vero is a serious thing. You must uh, really uh, make efforts. That's, that is the most uh, biggest, the biggest uh, problem. Then we have a question about uh, learning materials. Is there any way Mulki, Vero, Seto or Tartu can be learned outside of Estonia? And are there any materials, materials to learn them from scratch, from, from zero, without any knowledge? Uh, yes, as, as I sho have shown to you already, this OHPA, Vero OHPA, uh, you, you just uh, write to the Google uh, Vero OHPA, and um, I will put it in this chat, and you will find it, even uh, without U, Boro Oapa should work also, or Boro Oapa. And there are, as I showed, um, there are seven languages and uh, 14 language pairs, so you, you at least can start to to learn this vocabulary of Vero, but but there are there is also this uh, grammatic uh, grammat grammar section. It's not uh, enough, I know, but but for for starting uh, for some curiosity, uh, it 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 is something. Uh, English language language. So some materials based on English languages we we don't have still. But uh, but if you are interested, then uh, you you can mail me, and I, I will I, I can I can send you some lists of materials available online, mostly in Estonian or Vero, Vero or in Estonian. With this uh, uh, instructing uh, language there, or meta language or Estonian and Vero, but but some. At least some articles and so on uh, can be also in English. And uh, my mail address is at 
dot a a. Yeah, two a's, yeah. Uh, may I just add something to this question? So I think uh, even inside Estonia, actually, it is not so easy to really learn uh, little Orset or Mulki for a you know speaker of standard Estonian, like for example myself. The the only reason why I have been able to make some progress in the past few years uh, with Baro is because um, a postgraduate student um, at the University of Tartu, where uh, I have the possibility to take. Uh, but all classes uh, also uh, taught by uh, by uh, Sulu. Uh, but I think for uh, for a average Estonian who is not enrolled at the university, who lives in the capital city, Tallinn, or anywhere really, uh, it is difficult to to systematically learn the language the way we are used to learning major languages like you know, English or Spanish or Italian, because the the language teaching infrastructure like in terms of like textbooks and uh, you know just doesn't exist uh, and they all by example it's good but i don't think this is how you actually learn a language maybe you, you play around with it you tinker with it but you don't really learn a language like this and i think this is a, a major gap you know that we have and and probably one of the reasons is what uh Sula was saying that that because what our language uh, because for the estonian state uh Varo is a dialect of estonian rather than language then of course, you know, there is not so, there are not, it's not, there is not such a strong justification to build a whole language learning uh, infrastructure because it's a dialect, you know? So the, the fact that it is, it is, the state con considers it's a, it a dialect kind of demotes the, the language. And I think, uh, you know, it, it is very nice that the, the Estonian state spends some money on publishing textbooks and, and running the Borough Institute, it's, it's great. But uh, but uh, a political decision to, to kind of upgrade Varo to a language status, I think, would you know open so many new doors in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it is not it it is it is it isn't something unique unique in in the world. Most of uh, small languages struggle with the same thing. Yeah, and I would add as well that uh, quite often if people hear from language, they try to type it in YouTube, but there are like very few materials, like audiovisual materials about Varo in YouTube. Although we can find some sounds like books are being read and you can listen to them, but it's, uh, it's, it's a gap, as Oliver said. But then we have a, another question. And what is the perception of dominant Estonian society towards uh, Varo and Seto speakers? No, actually, I just answered <laughs> the question. Uh, Varo and Seto and, and also Mulki, all, all South Estonian languages, they are seen as a positive thing, but, uh, but not uh, very seriously. <laughs> it, 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 it can be funny, for Estonians and uh, it is a fun, fun and uh, warm and uh, good thing, but, uh, but uh, they do, don't uh, take it seriously. Uh, in, in Estonian society, in Estonian TV and newspapers, uh, already is used, uh, are used the terms Vero Kiel, Seto Kiel, like Vero language, Seto language, not anymore Vero dialect. Mo mostly are used uh, terms uh, Kiel, language. But uh, this uh, attitude is still like uh, people, people take it as a, oh, very often take it as a dialect, not, not a separate language uh, needing uh, much more effort and so on. But uh, mostly positive. But yes, as I said, very serious. Yeah, this is the hardest question to answer that. Why do you need it? Uh, what do you do with it? And it's, it's rather hard to answer if you, if you 
if someone has an attitude like that. But there's another, it's not a question, but you are being thanked. And uh, there's a statement that sharing media such as memes in Vora promotes the language to younger generations, which is essential for its preservation. So Yes, but, but, but uh, these memes are shared uh, on Facebook, but <laughs> young people say, say, say that it is already a place of uh, old people and so on. We, we, we must do something on TikTok and uh, such places, but <laughs> I don't know who, who will do it. Then there's a question about Estonian society. Do you usually switch to Estonian in the public space, or is there some level of assertiveness because the proximity of the languages allows both speakers in a conversation to not switch their language? Mm -hmm. You know, my my pers personal uh, uh, system or, or de decision is that uh, in the area, linguistic area of Voro, Voro language area, it's old Voromo, Voro, Voromo. This is area where Voro is spoken. Uh, I use only Voro in the shops, in uh, offices, and uh, and so on, um, on the streets. Everywhere I use only Voro. But uh, outside of uh, Voro area, uh, I cannot do it uh, very well because I have. I have tried in Tartu and in Tallinn. Uh, here, many people uh, think that you that I am speaking uh, Finnish, because <laughs> Vero, Estonian, and Finnish are very close languages, and um, and uh, especially Vero and Finnish are sounding very similar. And and ordinary people in Tallinn and Tartu very often think that I am speaking Finnish or uh, some uh, are confused and don't un understand me uh, well. But, but uh, on the Voro area, inside this Voro area, it is quite comfortable for me to use only Voro. But I know most of Voros don't do it. They could too, because uh, as... as uh, um, Questions ask, ask uh, said uh, um, pro there are very close languages, Voro and uh, and uh, Estonian, and uh, and we, we we will understood actually if we repeat the, the phrase once, twice, and it is possible. It's not uh, anything uh, impossible. So yes. In the language area, I, I, I use uh, only Vero, but outside it, uh, not, not, I, I must use also Estonia. Uh, but do you hear Vero speakers among themselves speak in Estonian or in English? Yes, I, <laughs> that, that's a uh, thing that. Uh, makes me very angry actually uh, especially in in facebook <laughs> uh, i know some borough speakers i know even borough activists uh, they are ha have conversation then comments posts they make it in estonian i i even don't understand why Be because most of this uh, Comments are, are from from other Voro speakers, and uh, in, in some some instances, all followers of some post or all Voro people, and they are commenting and posting uh, about this only in Estonian. It's something that uh, happens every day, and and. <laughs> it makes me mad because because I am using in on in Facebook only Voro in Facebook or or then for for international audience also already uh, English, but uh, I, I don't need I don't see any need to speak uh, or use in social media Estonian at all because if 
if you want, then you will understand. If you are Estonian, you will understand this. What is written in in Vero? Well, not not hundred percent, but but uh, the core of this uh, meaning, you you will understand. And uh, we have many more questions. Uh, following that, uh, what about uh, what you talked about? Uh, what can be done to have more speakers? Is there a possibility that uh, including in school? Uh, as uh, oh my god, uh, I'm so sorry. Is there a possibility of including in school setting as part of bilingual program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one of our one of our main dreams. I, I have dreamed uh, personally about this uh, many, many years. Um, but uh, even, even Buro uh, Revitalization Institute, institutions like uh, Buro Institute uh, are, aren't uh, able to, to organize uh, as far that, that's uh, bilingual classes and uh, or schools and kindergartens. We, we must do it. If we, if we want, want to really save our language, we must uh, make, make our educational system from uh, monolingual Estonian to bilingual, Vero equally, Vero Estonian bilingual system. But uh, somehow it is very, very hard and uh, we, we have tried to do it uh, many decades, but uh, I don't know. We want, we must uh, manage with it somehow, but but uh, still, still we we are we aren't able, haven't uh, done it. Uh, what would you suggest effective strategies in developing for fluent speakers of Vero in the coming decade uh, from 2022 to 2032 and how can how local and global communities can collaborate for uh, Vero language revitalization? As I said or mentioned this uh, uh, Scottish uh, Scottish uh, Revitalizer Finlay MacLeod. Leod. No, I, I will write it down. I just re read his materials. Um, I think uh, he's. Uh, uh, his uh, method is uh, very good. Uh, we, we haven't uh, used it uh, in Vero yet, but uh, in uh, basic, basically it is the same as uh, language nest, language nest method, but uh, for adults, uh, the groups uh, starting uh, from uh, from very simple words. Well, some group of people uh, um, is uh, gathering uh, in, into the course of this language and uh, they will, they, they, they are, uh, they will sign. Um, they will sign. Uh, th they will uh, say or, or or how to say. Lepping, Oliver, because lepping. Well, mm, agreement or a contract. They, yeah, they enter yeah, into yeah. an agreement. Yes, uh, students will uh, sign the agreement that uh, they will use only and only that small language and no, no English, no Estonian. And they will start from very simple things like uh, uh, cooking or, or uh, 
um, some work, uh, homework or, or uh, some conversation, simple everyday conversation and, uh, and so on. And with translating and grammar and so on, it is uh, actually prohibited in this course courses you you can if you if you need uh, some if you feel that you need uh, translating translation and reading and writing and uh, grammar then you you are free to find yourself some additional courses but this uh, basic courses uh, without any uh, grammar or translation you you just uh, starting from from scratch from 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 uh, from hearing uh, and speaking, from repeating uh, the very basic words and sentences and so on, and uh, and then then after after you are gained some some uh, level of uh, speaking the language already and understanding, and uh, then you are st starting with grammar and writing and uh, translating. So basically, language nest method for adults, and uh, I, I think uh, only only that this would would be really effective if you are asking this good methods. So how would we get uh, young people uh, come? Is the, would it be the same method or? <clears throat> that, that is I. I Personally, I, I, I uh, think that it is uh, extremely hard. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, so it is uh, the most important uh, target group. Somehow, uh, if you are a revitalizer of, uh, of certain small language, uh, then, then you, 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 you must uh, solve this problem. You, you must... Uh, <clears throat> find these young people who, who are who will uh, establish uh, uh, homes uh, who will with, with uh, this uh, small language as a home language and and uh, so yes how to do it i i have not no i have not uh, good recite but uh, but again, uh, I just have read this uh, Finlay, Finlay MacLeod's, um, Finlay MacLeod's uh, uh, materials, and I, I can suggest them to you. And also this, uh, because there were, were only this description of uh, courses, but also uh, some strategies how to how to uh, how to uh, approach these uh, young people in age of uh, let's say eighteen to twenty five? <clears throat> but I would say that we have two concerns or questions that we have to we have to ask ourselves. First one is that. Mm, the younger uh, generation goes, the more Estonian accent they have. For me, it, it sounds like that. So the purest uh, uh, is spoken by people who are 70, 80, and uh, the people who are 30, 40, they have quite strong Estonian accent. And the far it goes, the more we, we spend our time uh, asking ourselves where, whether the schools should be bilingual, the more good speakers of Vora we, we lose. So I think that's a problem. The other one is that uh, which Vora should we teach? Uh, we have this Vora <laughs> standardized version, but you can see in the Vora language group that every day there are serious discussions about uh, whether it's the right form or it's the wrong form. Yes, but but, but 
you, 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 you may, may, maybe you think it is a local problem, but it is global one because every, every language community struggles with this. There are some people who are new learners and their language is a bit uh, different or much different from old uh, users' language. And, and uh, some old speakers can hate this uh, new speakers' language and so on. I have read about uh, Breton language problems with this and uh, about the Basque language and so on and then about um, Welsh, and the same is in, in Vero. And uh, you just must use it, uh, so just must speak and write and so on. And, uh, and uh, it's not, uh, you, you, you must not uh, very concerned uh, about uh, the purity of the language. Of course, this is a issue, but, uh, but not the main issue. There is also a question which I can't understand, but I read it out. How is it that he came to have his language? Maybe it's for you. So, how do you, do you speak well? Or like, I, I don't know what's meant by that, but uh, <laughs> that's the question. I, uh, yeah. Whether uh, did you grow up speaking? Uh, did you grow up speaking well? Oh, okay. Uh, my childhood, on the time of my childhood, uh, it was all, all, already this uh, uh, shift to Estonian. And my um, uh, grandmother and mother spoke between them only Vero, but they tried to speak to me Estonian because it was uh, it was like a, in, in society, it was the right thing to do so, and everybody did so. And, uh, and they tried to speak only Estonian to me, and sometimes uh, they failed to do so, and uh, they still spoke Vero to me. And uh, every day I heard speaking Vero um, between grandmother and mother and uh, other adults. So adults tried, desperately tried to spoke only Estonia with me, but I still uh, heard so much Vero uh, around me that I, I learned it. And, and when I um, went uh, older and uh, about in age, 15, 16, 17, I started to interest uh, more about, about on, on this uh, own language. And I, I saw that uh, e even some of uh, my relatives in, who are living in Tallinn, in Estonian capital, they are, they are, they are seeing Vural as a very special thing. And, uh, and I, and at the same day, time uh, also this Vero, uh, um, like Vero linguistic revolution started, and I, I heard uh, about Vero summer universities and uh, about uh, about uh, po poets uh, who are writing in Vero and so on, and it I was inspired by them and. Uh, I think I was uh, 17 or 16 when I decided that uh, from today I will speak only Vero and no, no, no word in Estonian anymore, at least uh, in the Vero area. <laughs> and uh, yes, it was quite, uh, quite, uh, Big uh, this decision, and uh, I think I I have done, I I, I have been on th that way from this age to, to until today. It seems like uh, we have run out of questions, but I would ask one that even 
if it stays like it, Estonian doesn't recognize Svero as, uh, as a language, uh, what would be the next steps to do, like in 10 years? Should we create more, uh, more materials or, or what, what would be the next steps? Yes, we, we desperately need this support uh, of state to, to establish or reorganize our schools and the kindergartens when, when we don't have this uh, support or, or only, we have only modest support, then some miracle must happen because I don't see this uh, very strong will of uh, Vero people to, to establish private schools functioning in Vero or, 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 or some kind of like some, something like that, some, some private actions, because Vero people aren't, uh, Vero area isn't the richest area in Estonia. For example, Catalo Catalonia in, in Spain, it is the richest part of Spain. And there it is possible that uh, private schools are founded at, and so on. But, but Veroma is not the, the, the poorest, purest, uh, poorest uh, region of Estonia, but one of the poorest, not the richest. And uh, that's because the state support is uh, crucial. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, if we don't receive it, uh, then I don't know. We, we must find some way uh, to, to do these things. Uh, maybe maybe we, we must uh, learn from, let's say, from Scottish Gaelic or from, from other communities, some new, new ways then. Niin, nüüd kas me tõmbame nüüd otsa kokku või selle, et me ei ole pea katsi tunni kõnenud, et kõnedas, et pead poolt teist juba lähti nagu <laughs> miin hägusest. Jah, ma arvan küll. Mm -hmm. Jaane Kaask, maybe we, we must finish now <laughs> at last. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you are ready, if there are no more questions or comments, I guess we can wrap it up. And so uh, let's let's all please have a digital round of applause for this wonderful talk. This was an absolute pleasure and so informative and inspiring. So thank you so much, Shalom. Thank you, Yannick and Oliver, for being here and contributing to the conversation as well. Uh, and thank you for uh, the translations, Oliver. It was a pleasure to, to get to hear some Voro in this talk. Uh, well, we have one more comment from Mariana about uh, Catalonian immersion. Uh, and so thank you, everybody who tuned in. Uh, this was a great session. Thank you for your insightful comments and questions. Uh, I hope you'll join us here in about eight hours for Prem Pyak's talk on uh, Indigenous language revitalization in Nepal. But let's give a big, huge round of applause and thank you to our speakers today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you all. We'll see you soon and uh, have a, a wonderful evening or morning wherever you are. Take care, folks. Bye.